Hey, Jelly, how's it going? Hey, Adam, how are you? Good, man. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. So um, our podcast is about your journey in music. I know, obviously, uh, acting has been a p- big part of your life, but um, I want to see if we can get your musical journey. Absolutely. Love that. Cool, man. Uh, I did read that you're from uh, Minnesota, uh, St. Paul, Minneapolis. St. Paul. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about that. Um, grew up in a, you know, suburban area. There's not really much rapport. Grew up um, around a lot of nature, um, uh, family, a big family on my mother's side, uh, Irish Catholic on that side, okay. much more conservative feeling on my father's side and um, grew up, was doing a lot of performance and, and uh, watching Disney movies and singing and things like that, got into acting and have always done music on the side. And it's not until recently that I really picked that up and, mm-hmm. and made that more of a, a go. Okay. Okay. Like, uh, tell me about getting into music. How did, how'd you get into music originally? Uh, probably just through watching musicals. Um, uh, that's sort of the queer element, of course. Uh, <laughs> And watching Judy Garland and, and, and the classic um, gay narrative there. Mm-hmm. And then over time, just got into more music as I got, um, uh, you know, uh, more de- like uh, more of my feelings as I got older. I got more into acoustic music, um, you know, early entry points being like Sufjan Stevens at a young oh, age. Sure. Was like, oh, that's it. Um, that really resonated. And then as I grew older, I just got more and more into music after hearing some records that were you know beyond beyond my years and kind of like i don't know how they're doing this mm-hmm. and then that led to i want to do this um okay this is more than just uh um uh, pop music on the radio which is also wonderful this is uh i don't know it's like a real craft so that's when i really got into it okay okay uh, you talked about musicals and uh being drawn to that early on were you um obviously, obviously you're an actor so i'm sure you're in these musicals as a young kid Yes, yes. Okay. In musicals in opera was in um, Bizet's Carmen as a kid, which oh, I did wow. not understand was about prostitutes until 10 years later. Um, <laughs> if I can say that. Um, and um, say whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but yeah, I just was always like enchanted by that. And then mm-hmm. the, the musicals I was in were um, varied, you know, like at one, we, we did this adaptation of a famous children's book called, um, the stinky cheese man. And mm-hmm. they had me doing a Manilow, Barry Manilow, um, solo as the, the microphone dropped from the ceiling and the spotlight went on. And I sang this song that they crafted called it's no picnic being cheese. Um, <laughs> and so that kind of performance element of musicals was always there. And there was always in the musical, some, um, besides Carmen, of course, there was some level of performativity of like, oh yeah, and this is a song. Now this is a uh, a number. Now mm-hmm. that's beyond just a musical setting. That always was a, a theme. Sure, sure. What was like? Uh, do you remember as a child, like the moment you're like, you know, I I need to be performing. Like, were you? Was it in one of those musical theater? You know, it was. It's been told to me that I came out of the womb singing. So I've sure. got early videos of me. Um, uh, absorbed in the television screen just okay. looking up at it as going i think that's where i'm meant to be i mean i'm all, like transcribing this feeling onto my two-year-old self but it's there's transfiction at a young age mm-hmm. um and so then that feels like okay then that's i guess what i want to do it was never really a question of oh yeah i want to do this now um always was something that was inherent okay it was always yeah. something yeah so from from those you know, early theater and, and, and getting into really into acting, I would think that's kind of where you started. Yeah. Was that kind of like, so was that more the path and journey you started taking once you hit like middle school, high school, or was, was music yeah. ever a focus as far as like being a rock star or musician or. Yeah, that didn't come until much, much later, you know, as okay. a kid, was just so focused on acting and um, wanting to, to be in things, wanting to be in TV, film, theater. Um, mm-hmm. And then it wasn't until later where I realized actually going back that, oh, the entire time there's been music involved. Sure. Um, and that's actually separatable from acting. Mm-hmm. Um, you can separate that. And so then, I mean, that was the journey. That was it. I, after that, you know, um, was in, uh, was traveling out of town to go and be in um, uh, TV movies and TV shows and things like that. And then, of course, during that downtime all the time, just listening to music, as I assume uh-huh. we all do. Right. Um, and then it wasn't until I got Logic 
on my computer where I realized, oh, I could start like doing some of this on my own. As garish as those early attempts are, I just listened to them. They are garish. <laughs> um, really what, awful. When when did you get Logic? Like, was that pretty recently, or was that? Uh, that was like seventeen, that? so it was about eight oh, nine wow. years ago. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I was just like, you know, playing around. I moved to LA when I was seventeen, and then my mom left um, a month after, or two weeks after I turned eighteen. So I was out there all by myself, and there's like there's wow. nothing to fill your time. Yeah. Um, so I downloaded logic after i started dating someone who was um into edm okay uh, and so like my first early attempts it's nothing like my record are <laughs> all are all like like you know house beats like sure. all of them are called like house beat four dot x you know just trying <laughs> to be alternative um and that's what i started doing and then started to like write songs around that um mm-hmm. and sort of the seminal moment the the transition period was i did this acting class and they have this exercise mm-hmm. and I, I think it's got a history. It's called tornado of talent. And basically the, the prompt is you have to do either uh, the thing that scares you most to do publicly or the thing you've always dreamed of doing most publicly. So uh, this is usually like a first, a day of uh, the first day exercise mm-hmm. that people are assigned. And mine of course was, it was both the thing I feared most and the thing I dreamed of most was to sing a song that I wrote in front of everyone. And it went over pretty well. I was like, God, I think this might be, might be good. Like, I mean, I, it was not, it's not a good song. It'll never be released, but I was like, oh yeah, I think I might like be onto something. You know, there was an inch of the, of the passion there. So everybody had to, to do this, uh, this project, or um, you were like, the thing I'm most afraid of is this, and I'm going to stand up and I'm going to do it right now in the classroom. <laughs> it, you're giving it like two days ahead of time, the, the prompt. Uh-huh. Um, and everyone has different prompts based on their entry level into the class. That was my first month in this class. Um, and so other people have uh, different things, you know. Um, uh, other people have things about like, um, uh, uh, what's your biggest shame, your biggest vanity, your biggest... Mm. So these public kind of admissions of, of what you dream of or what you're most fearful of. And you had a couple of days to figure out what that would be and then go perform it in front of the yeah, class. Yeah, a couple, couple of days to write the song, really. Um, <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. Like, so this wasn't a song that you had, and you're like, okay, I, I'm, I'm waiting for the moments I can perform this kind of thing. Like, not <laughs> waiting, but it was like kind of there. But this is like, you know, you're kind of forced into it. I, I wish I was that smart to have written it beforehand, like, you know, <laughs> band, crafting it. Um, sure. You know, it was just like oh god i think i've got like five chords that i know and i can kind of like put those together and then perform it um it was a terribly sad song i i mean like it in a way that's like oh you know like that sounds like a 14 year old wrote it um and but the i could tell the feeling was there right like Mm -hmm. even if your song's not great um you do connect to something inside that's like oh yeah there's actually some true emotion in here Mm-hmm. and that's the performer aspect that's probably the acting aspect that was mm-hmm. there um a real craft of songwriting not in my in my purview yet but um the love of it was there sure sure and was that in college when when you took that class i think i was like 19 or 20 or something like that um yeah 19 or 20 and i just remember shitting my pants as i got up to that piano she had a the teacher had a piano in her Oh man, I mean, I'm like I'm re- I'm reliving it now, and just getting <laughs> up there and being like, <clears throat> you know, and couldn't. I, I think I played the first chord wrong, and the voice was shaking. Um, and I remember that the feeling of of it all leaving you. You know, the it's like your your cup is full when you go in. You've got so much nervous energy, mm-hmm. and then it slowly dissipates over time, and then it fills back up again as you finish. It's like. You know, and then I always turn to a silent audience and everyone's just staring at me in the pitch black. And I'm like, okay, 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 okay. You know, I think I can do this. I think I can do this. Okay. You know, and let's see what they say. Um, and it was such a release because it was the thing I feared most and the thing I dreamed of most. And I think usually those are connected at, I don't know, somewhere at the same point. Mm-hmm. Frequently. So. Wow. What a moment. And then, so <laughs> after, after you play the song, was there an applause? Like, was it like. Oh, no applause felt- allowed. Nothing. No applause allowed. In <laughs> no, yeah, they don't want any. It's like a, I think it's an old acting thing. They don't want you to have any um, 
like positive reinforcement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not far off the mark. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> the neuroses continue. In yeah, that. I'm. Um, uh, I did radio, or I, I was on the radio terrestrial radio for 15 years, and I, every boss I ever had, every program director, always said like they would never give you like a whole lot of praise if you were doing really well they wouldn't be like you're that, that was a great job you did it was always Killing like it. you're always subpar yeah. <laughs> in a matter <laughs> they, they figured out the artist brain they really had like, right it was totally like, oh, just chasing the sticks and carrots that's it right um, <laughs> you know, it's nuts and neurotic um but yeah you just don't get any positive refor- reinforcement and you're only talking to your teacher i mean even in that class like and i think this is also a historical thing in some acting classes you're not allowed to say comments to the actor like if you're hmm. sitting in the audience you're always so sp- supposed to go matt really inspired me with his um performance of chekhov um you know oh yeah uh bryn she she really did this and this really inspired me even though bryn and matt are sitting right there oh you have to like talk about them in third person even though talk they're like third person right next to you <laughs> yeah that's interesting i yeah. wonder yeah what the psyche behind all that is i I bet not letting it all go to an actor's head, which is yeah. like an easy, right? Like, um, <laughs> um, it's supposed to it's supposed to keep you grounded, you know, feet on the floor as you get these notes, and you're not supposed to be, you know, reacting or anything like that. It's I think it's also supposed to make you more um, uh, uh, process driven versus results. Sure, sure, yeah, sure. That's a, you know, that's, that's the idea. Right, right. That's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so tell me about. Um, you know, your, your current musical project, Odd Comfort. So was this something that you had going for a while? Was this something that sparked, you know, recently? Because obviously you've been in musical your whole life, but acting took up a, a big portion, I would yeah. think, of your of your career path here. So um, what sparked uh, Odd Comfort? And tell me about starting this project. Uh, I was um, in a sort of like makeshift band for... Mm-hmm. Uh, two years and just like you know playing around in logic and just making like endless loops not ever oh, making really? songs yeah okay. just making loops and like i mean uh, throwing sticks on the ground and recording it and then making that into sound um and so i was doing a lot of producing for that record cool yeah um we'd scream at the top of our lungs into a, a metal container and then like and then find kids screaming outside and try and mash the sounds together um, <laughs> you know really thought ourselves avant-garde and we uh that band fell apart and i i I went through a pretty big life event which is i lost my father three years ago oh my gosh i'm sorry oh thank you and it it was uh, expected he had had um uh, als for five years and so Mm -hmm. when that time came there was all this um uh, anticipation right it's like okay when is this going to happen when is he going to go and when it finally happened um just everything gets as i'm sure everyone knows when they've been affected by death it just kind of turned everything upside down and all Mm -hmm. of a sudden i went why am i not making the music that i want to make Mm -hmm. Uh, what's stopping me from doing this uh and the answer to those that second question was not a lot Mm -hmm. um so i went to this i went on this trip to southeast asia at the behest of my best friend he said take a one-way ticket to southeast asia and just go for two months right in the midst of uh, this was three months after um, my father passed. Wow. And he said, go by yourself. I think this would be the best thing for you. Um, and he was right. It was incredibly difficult. And um, I woke up every day wondering why someone was not asking me about how I was doing right, but the world keeps turning. And it really shifted my perspective of things. I was looking for someone to um, comfort me during that time but everyone there they'd all gone through extreme loss laos cambodia um you know uh and people are there on vacation other tourists like no one's looking to um talk about grief and so during that time i realized oh right you know part of life is is um is self-reliance and honestly that's what led me to start making the music on my own and start pursuing it more full-time wow Uh, just to Oh yeah, to make your own music and to um, go after that and go after the dream of what you would want it to be is like, for me at least, it took a lot of self-reliance and realizing that no one else is going to make that dream happen for you. You got to kind of go off and do it on your own. 
Mm -hmm. Wow. Was that, I mean, I'm sure that was pretty scary to just get up and, and go somewhere with no real agenda or nowhere that you know where you're going to be and when you're oh, home. <laughs> yeah, man. I got hustled the first day that I was in oh. Vietnam. Um, I got, there was just so many things that went wrong. I mean, or that, that didn't feel right. Or I remember I was on a tour in Vietnam and then they asked me, I, somebody told me, oh, you should go to, a, um, um, go to Cambodia. And someone said, we can set up a motorcycle for you. And literally on the side of a dirt road, a motorcycle pulls up and I hop out of the nice tour bus and onto this guy's, the back of his motorcycle and start <laughs> riding towards the border. Um, you know, it, for someone, I was a like hugely type A as a, as a kid. And that could be some of my default resting state. It really just kind of freed me up. It's like, oh yeah, you figure it out. You arrive on an Island without any money there. There's a hotel um, a low grade hotel that will hire you as a waiter for five days and they'll let you stay there. So that's what I did. Um, wow. You know, you just kind of keep on going to the next thing and all these things apply to music. All of them do. They're all that songwriting for me. That's the same process of putting out a record of making a music video of directing my own videos. It, there, there's this great anticipation and free fall. And then you get there on the day and you just start following your impulses and soon enough you have a song soon enough you have a record soon enough you have a video mm -hmm. um that's been largely my experience wow and how, how long were you um in southeast asia for? Two months. Like, you ended up spending the two months there yeah wow and you came back and is that when you started writing uh, what became about men yes yeah that's when okay. i um uh, I was trying to write lyrics over there. None of them um, were very good. Um, and then I got back and just threw myself at it. Um, uh, started writing these songs based on some loops that I had, some like, you know, sonic worlds um, that I had sort of made just production wise. And then thought, oh, I could make songs out of these. And then one day in March of 2018, I believe, uh, I knew this guy who um, who did some engineering um, for the band that we were trying to make some stuff and never got off the ground. And he was so great, Theo Karen. Mm -hmm. And I thought I should just reach out, just see if he's got an availability and how much that would cost. I have no idea. And he said, you'll never believe this, but last night I had an opening in two weeks. Um, it's a three week window. Would you be able to do it? you know, at that sense, like at that point, you're just like, okay, you know, sure, I'll go. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. All right, you know, you get <laughs> paranoid, like, oh, you know, what the hell is going on? Um, and so I decided to do that. Um, and it was just a great experience. And, and you know, and then a record came out on the other side. It's just, it's like, I don't know, it's weird to think about it like that, but that is how it happened. Wow. So that was done 2000, end of 2018? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, middle of 2018. Yeah. Manila 2018. So the finish you finished the record, you put out a, a few songs from from the album. Yeah. And then the full the full thing coming out in uh, like about a week from now, right? We can yeah, have Friday. Yeah. Very cool. Um yeah, oh yeah, this coming Friday. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Well, so if that the record is put out in two thousand or finished in two thousand eighteen, you've just been slowly putting out the singles. Is that kind of been the game plan? The game plan, the game plan. Yeah. I wish I had a better um uh, really what happened is that I finished the record and then froze. Okay. I, I mean, I finished it um, beginning of 2019, end of 2018, mm -hmm. um, you know, mixed and mastered and all that stuff. And I, I just froze. I, I don't even know what to do with this. I, like, okay. I guess I could send it to a friend, um, mm -hmm. you know, and see what they say. And everyone's like, yeah, man, great. Like put it out. You know, I'd send it to someone else and they say, yeah, man, great. Like put it out. And, that apparently was not the answer I was looking for because I was like, <laughs> you know, I was like, no, I'm what okay, <laughs> sure. Um, and then I and then I started making some imagery for it, like in March and like eight, like you know, and then like eventually decided to make a music video, um, like in the middle of the year of 20, uh, 2018, maybe. I mean, honestly, it that was that long ago, mm -hmm. and then I was like, oh, one video is not enough, oh, I need more. Um, and so then I was trying to figure out what I could do uh, to make a video. And then by the end of 2019, I had three videos and then still was like, right, no, I need more. I need mm -hmm. more. 
again, this was all to really explain like the psychology. I just think I was trying to stall it. I was trying to control it, trying to stall it. There's the type A personality. And then was just like stricken with fear. Just like, I don't know if any can let anybody listen to this and I, it needs to be exactly right. Um, and then I just got sick of myself at the end of 2019. I was like New Year's Eve. I was like, what the hell are you doing? Put the record out, make mm-hmm. some moves. And then here we are in, the, in October. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> still going. Still going. Still going. Yeah. So I was wondering if it was recorded or something that you started maybe during COVID, but it sounds like you've had, yeah, you've had it done for a while now. Oh yeah. No, there's other records now. Like I've already, yeah, I'm working on a few records now because there's so much time. Uh-huh. Um, and I have a, a second record that's being mixed right now that I made in 2019. Um, so I've kind of like, this is all very late. I'm like trying to catch up to my own uh, right. private uh, output. Privately, I'm outputting all the time, but putting it out to the public has been the big step for me. So this is the this is the final break um, for that record. Was it um, like, you know, you recently started putting out music under Odd Comfort. Was trying to see, you know, I mean, I, I guess my question would be like, as an actor, like seeing yourself on screen in that moment, was that is like does that compare pretty quickly to or is that relative to the success of your your music or it's, not so much you know what i mean there's a link for sure yeah. right like, you know i'm and i'm sure you know it's like once you put something out and you see yourself somewhere it's it stops being public uh, it stops being private it's public now mm-hmm. um, and that's that's similar but it's so different acting mm-hmm. is someone else's words in a, a costume that you hopefully have like some bit of a hand in, but someone's picking out those options for you, you know, um, and it's someone else's direction and it's their writing. And that's the thrill of it. It's, mm. I know it's a lot of submission. You're just like, okay, I'm just going to do what you guys want and I'll, I'll bring myself to it. But um, ultimately it's in their hands, what they do with it, all that mm. stuff. There's a great amount of freedom in that. Um, a lot of neuroses in that for actors. All right. Like, how is this going to come across? And that's why I need to control it. Um, but I find that pretty freeing. It's like, oh yeah, you hired me, you want that, like, great. I can come and deliver the product and everything. But when the music has been released, that's my words. That's, you know, production I worked on. That's, that's the, that's the private fantasy. That's the, the music I hear in my head that relates to my experience. And then there's me in the video, um, a video I conceived with my good friend, or a music video I directed that I you know, saw a Mariah Carey video. I was like, oh yeah, I want to make a really hellish unhinged version of that. Um, can I do that? And then, you know, seeing people's reaction to that and being like, wow, that was really unhinged. Um, I'm talking about Punisher and um, people are saying, oh, it's really unhinged. And you're like, God, I guess it is. Um, and so that's different than acting. It's just, if I'm unhinged in someone else's uh, uh, product, um, that's a certain amount of scariness, you know, if I, and I've got, I've always cast in these darker roles. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's scary. But then when it's yourself and there's no net to fall back on, I don't know else to blame, but you know, myself and, uh, you know, so um, that's a, a different thrill. Yeah. It's a bit, you're a bit more vulnerable because you're, it's all your own personal art, whereas you're acting someone else's vision, so to speak. So to speak. Yeah. I mean, they're both vulnerable because like acting has a weird way of, uh, making you vulnerable if you say mm-hmm. the words yeah it, you know you'll start crying before you know it you're like oh you know like what are these magic words doing to me um <laughs> <laughs> devil music um and then the 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 songs they'll only be as vulnerable as you want them to be sure. so oh, that's a good point yeah you know like if you have to cry in this or you have some emotional scene and your character's going through something acting wise, like that's what they're going to wait for. They're going to do take after take until you reach that depth. But then songs, like, I mean, you, you can write whatever depth song you want. You know, no one's going to call you to task for that. Um, but it's vulnerable to put out a part, part of yourself, no matter how vulnerable it is. That is the vulnerable act. Sure. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, so we, have you had a chance to perform any of these songs? Like are, how, what about live performance? Is that a thing that you're interested in? Oh, absolutely. I'll do um, um, hopefully two lives this week. Uh, oh, wow. One on Friday to promote the record um, at my handle um, at Joey Polari. And then hopefully, uh, uh, not set in stone yet, but hopefully a live on, a, on another account, um, which I'll be thrilled about. Uh, and that feels really good. I'm excited for that. Th- 
weirdly, even though that was a lot of fear, now that sort of feels normal. I'm like, oh, right, I'm going to go perform now. Uh, mm -hmm. That is a little bit more regular to me. Um, we'll see if that translates, uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, that does feel more regular. So I'm very, very excited about that. Very, very cool. I can't wait to to hear it. I appreciate your time, Joey. This has been awesome. I do have one more question. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Any advice? It's the advice I wish I would have given myself. I would have gotten or given myself. Uh, um, Arthur Russell said, first thought, best thought. Um, go with yourself. I'm just repeating other people's um, other people's advice. Go with yourself. Go with your first instinct. If you think that sounds great, um, eventually the output will, will will catch up to your taste, um, and go after it. And you know that's only got this one life. Go after it. <laughs>